Hi, I'm Rachel Shelton. I'm a faculty member at Columbia School of Public Health in New York, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this relationship between adaptation and sustainability and also map out some of the future directions for sustainability research. So there's this really interesting tension, and I think we see it um, in all the research focused on implementation in, in particular, um, this tension between fidelity and continuing to deliver a program with fidelity and adaptation, the extent to which we can adapt it to fit with new settings or populations. Um, I think historically the field uh, leaned towards um, the approach of fidelity matters. We have to have high fidelity when we're delivering and implementing and sustaining these programs. Um, I think that the field has shifted a bit over time to recognize that, yes, fidel fidelity is important. We, there's a strong literature that suggests that higher fidelity is associated with improved health outcomes. But um, the reality is uh, high fidelity is not always possible in diverse real world settings for a number of reasons and that adaptations happen. So I think the field's shifted more to think about. Um, we need to, to understand, document, um, and understand the impact of adaptations, um, particularly planned adaptations on important DNI outcomes and also effectiveness of programs. Um, so again, people often talk about um, fidelity consistent modifications, um, those, those modifications where the core components are still in place, but we've made adaptations Maybe we've added a component, maybe um, to address, you know, or, or made changes to make it more culturally appropriate um, or to fit with the new context, but we still have the key components in place that make the intervention effective. Um, and then fidelity inconsistent modifications. So these are often the unplanned ones, the ones that happen because of lack of time or um, are not necessarily uh, consistent with keeping the core components of the program. So again, I think the field is shifting to, to want to start to think about how do we study well these planned adaptations on sustainability in terms of the impact they have on long-term sustainability of these evidence-based programs and practices, as well as the effectiveness. And, um, you know, Shannon Wilsey Sturman, David Chambers, um, a lot of people have done some great work starting to come up with these um, adaptation classification taxonomies of the varying types of um, adaptations that can be made to understand and document the type of adaptation and then start to more systematically understand the implications for those adaptations. Um, and again, this is really, um, again, I think a shift in the field, starting to think about sustainability in a dynamic con context instead of thinking about sustainability as being equivalent with institutionalization. And this really comes along with the recognition that, you know, there are environmental changes that happen over time when you're studying sustainability in practice settings and service systems with respect to health care policy or, or larger policies. So the context in which we're delivering and sustaining evidence-based interventions is dynamic. Um, there are changes in knowledge and guidelines. So I do a lot of work in cancer screening, and we've seen multiple shifts in terms of the recommended guidelines for mammography screening, for pap screening, um, you know, uh, over multiple uh, time periods over the past 10 to 15 years. So again, our evidence-based programs need to adapt with those guidelines. And, up, and updates in uh, evidence. There's personnel changes in terms of who might make sense or who is available to deliver the program. Um, there's intervention changes. So again, as more effective evidence-based interventions are identified and developed, the other ones may need to be replaced or the, the needs of the population or community may shift. So you may have successfully addressed an issue and it may no longer be a key priority for the population you're serving. So again, recognizing that when we think about sustainability, when we think about long-term delivery of programs, evidence-based programs and policies and practices, we need to recognize this dynamic context. And David Chambers has done a lot of work in this area. Um, he really initially was one of the first people to argue that we need to continuously refine and improve interventions as they're sustained. And really came, you know, put forth this idea about adaptation being inevitable and even welcomed, and that in some cases, again, evolution or replacement of evidence-based interventions may actually be warranted. He put forth um, also this idea that, you know, typically with interventions, we often talk about things like voltage, voltage drop. So here on the right, you know, we expect interventions um, 
to deliver lower benefits over time as we move from efficacy to effectiveness to implementation to sustainability. And this idea of program drift that um, the intervention over time, you'll kind of expect deviation from, you know, manualized protocols or high fidelity, and we expect that that will decrease benefits. So he really advocated that we should move away from thinking about things like program drift and voltage drop, and he put forth the dynamic sustainability framework, which really focuses on continued learning and evaluation, pro problem solving, and ongoing adaptations of interventions to enhance their fit with different populations and within differing contexts over time and as new evidence emerges. So I think this framework has been really critical in kind of shifting our overall thinking about sustainability as dynamic and um, welcoming and understanding um, adaptations as being potentially an important part of sustainability. There's important questions though that I think are, um, you know, come from this. So how much adaptation of intervention components is acceptable or expected over time? And maybe that needs to be decided um, a priori in terms of, you know, what's, what's recognizable in terms of the program. Um, is there or should there be a recommended threshold that needs to be reached for interventions to be considered sustained? And again, really to document adaptations to understand their impact on both effectiveness and sustainability, which may include a lot of the hybrid models and designs that, um, that have been introduced in the field. There's a lot of opportunities for advancing the field of sustainability research, which is very exciting. Um, I did a AJPH paper recently with, um, in, t in 2019 um, on sustaining evidence-based interventions and policies and laying out some of the opportunities for advancing the field. So again, a central part of it is recognizing that sustainability is dynamic, it allows for adaptation, and that it's critical that we understand that and understand and document adaptation as part of studying sustainability. Um, I think finally the field has started to coalesce around some of the definitions of sustainability, some of the operationalization and measurement outcomes. Um, and some of the conceptual frameworks. And so I think that there's finally an opportunity to think about um, being consistent in our use of those definitions and those indicators, and then do things like empirically test um, some of our conceptual frameworks. So things like the dynamic sustainability framework, things like the integrated sustainability framework. So I think that's an important next step. In terms of designs, because sustainability is inherently um, longitudinal. Longitudinal perspectives are really critical and, uh, and historically we've done a lot of retrospective or cross-sectional, but I think prospective, ideally multi-level mixed method study designs are optimal for studying sustainability and adaptation and combination and recognizing again the dynamic nature of sustainability over time and again empirically testing these frameworks to advance the field. Research is also needed to identify and evaluate planned sustainability strategies. So what's, just like we test um, implementation strategies through things like the ERIC taxonomy, are there sustainability strategies that are particularly useful? So again, building an evidence base around that is an important next step. And then one area that's been pretty much um, unaddressed is policy sustainability. We often talk about, I mean, not often, but in the field, there's been the conceptualization of policy termination. Um, but we've often focused just on policy implementation. So again, understanding policy sustainability with an adaptation framework in mind, I think is another important area. And again, there's a lot of consideration. So being explicit about what really constitutes sustainability of an evidence-based intervention. Is it sustained use of the intervention? Is it continued use with fidelity? Is it provider adherence? Is it use as evolved or adopted over time? Is it sustained health benefits? Is it the sustained partnerships and capacity? So working with stakeholders to identify and prioritize which of those will be the focus. And ideally, again, it's multiple sustainability in indicators as outcomes. Establishing timeframes. So we know that a lot of our literature, we've had very short timeframes with some exceptions, but when is something considered sustainable? Typically, wanna, we wanna look at least a year past um, either initial delivery or implementation of the intervention. But, you know, having what's I, what would really be ideal is, you know, at the, at the one year mark, at the two year, at the three year, at the four year, at the five year, um, that kind of prospective dynamic understanding of sustainability um, is ideal.
And again, thinking about these implementation and sustainability strategies and starting to understand, are there is there overlap? So are some of the strategies that matter for implementation, do they also matter for sustainability? And a really exciting area, I think, is also this de-implementation and de-adoption de idea. And again, because we're um, recognizing that sustainability is dynamic and that context change, that evidence change, there may need to be programs and practices that we need to <laughs> remove or replace. So understanding that in relation to sustainability 